Hey there, scientist friends, and welcome to another edition of Photoshop for the Scientist. Now today we're going to be looking at the Crop Tool, which, believe it or not, is the most used tool inside Photoshop, at least according to the last Photoshop tutorial I read. So there's some knowledge that you can use if you want, I guess. Uh, anyways, so cropping is one of those things that's really not that complicated just on its own. Um, to do it, you just click the Crop Tool, so to select the area that you want to crop, hit OK, and there you go, you've got a cropped image. And if that's really all you're looking to do, you can save yourself uh, the next seven or so minutes because uh, you are done, my friend. But as with most things in Photoshop for the Scientist, we are going to look a little deeper and see what else we can do here with the Crop Tool. So first of all, to get to the crop tool, you either push the crop but uh, go to the crop tool button here, or you can push the C key if you're a shortcut key type of fella. And you'll notice right away you've got these handles that come up on your document, and these are what you would expect to be able to click and drag both on your edges and your corners. And usually this is how I like to work, uh, to be quite honest, uh, just to sort of adjust things um, any way that I like. But if you prefer, I'm going to undo that here to select a certain aspect ratio. So if you wanted to create a square crop, for instance, you can select that preset up here, and now whenever you click and drag on any of these handles, you're going to stay in a perfect square. You've got some other options here, which uh, you can look at these um, on your own time. But I should note, if what you're looking for is not on this list, you can define your own. And if we go with WH resolution here, and, we, and say we wanted to do 4 inches by 6 inches at a resolution of 300 pixels per inch. And I actually meant to do landscape, uh, which is fine because to switch you just click these two arrows. And again you've got uh, now this aspect ratio that is going to stay consistent uh, no matter how you move things around. But really I'm not interested in that so I'm just going to hit clear. Now the straighten tool, or the straighten button here, uh, is probably not super useful for our purposes. It's really handy, say, if you've taken a photograph of a horizon and you want to make sure the horizon is straight on your crop. Um, then you would just click the straighten tool and draw a line along your horizon, and that would crop it to make sure that things are straightened out that way. But because we're working with just square boxes here, we know that we're straight. Next we have our button with our different grid uh, crop overlays. And another, this is another one of those things that you're probably not going to use uh, really all that often. But if you want, you can cycle through them with uh, the O key and choose your favorite one. You've got a nice uh, golden spiral there. But I'm just going to stick with uh, the grid for me is, is perfectly fine. Uh, the next thing here we have our settings, the little gear icon. So in classic mode, um, this uh, allows you to click and drag the crop box itself as opposed to in the sort of current mode where if you're going to be clicking and dragging you're going to be dragging the canvas which to be honest always bamboozles me whenever I do it uh, I'm always thrown off by that but I'm still trying to get used to it but really it's one of those personal preference things uh, show cropped area uh, is pretty self-explanatory you either get this uh, crop shield or you get nothing at all so again personal preference Crop shield, same idea, and auto center, auto center preview. Um, here with the, with the auto center off, you can see my little center nubbin here moves all over the place. But with it on, it uh, sticks in the middle. So really, you're probably not going to need these things, but you can tinker around and choose whatever makes your eyeballs the happiest. Ultimately, what I really wanted to show you is this box called delete crop pixels. Uh, I'm just going to do that for now. Now, here on Photoshop for the Scientists, I am a pretty big advocate of non-destructive editing. And what that means is that uh, really at no point do I like to permanently delete pixels from the image or the document that I'm working on. So generally, almost 99% of the time, I'm going to leave this unchecked. And when it's unchecked, uh, I'll show you what happens. So let's say we did a crop and we weren't happy. Well, here we go. We have this, and this is really just not useful. Uh, and I can, you can't submit that, that's, that's terrible. So if we were to put the crop tool or re-engage it here, you can see that everything else is still here, it's just been hidden. So now we can readjust our crop uh, to something we're more happy with. 
And not only that, uh, if we didn't want to have to go through the crop tool, we can go up to image, or sorry, edit. Nope, I was right, image, uh, reveal all. And that's going to bring our entire canvas back. So I really like to work that way, because if delete crop pixels was checked, uh, we've run the risk of, uh, once we crop, to delete everything never to be seen again. And that could really bone us over, potentially, if we delete something that we didn't mean to. Um, so for the purposes of finishing off this figure, I'm just going to crop what I would be wanting to submit, which I'm going to crop out the word figure one right now, because typically you're not going to submit that as a figure for your when you're submitting uh, for a publication. So I'm just going to do a nice tight crop around uh, my image panels here and hit OK. And I might zoom in a bit. And I can see that I've got some extra white space, which is annoying. So I'm just going to recrop again and hit the plus or the check sign. And uh, that looks pretty good to me. So uh, I think this might be a record for the shortest video of mine, um, which is good. I'm trying to cut it down. So that's it for cropping. And uh, again, if you have any questions or comments or other ways to crop an image, if I might have missed some, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And with that, uh, I guess we'll call it a day. So remember, friends, you worked hard to get that data. So why not work a little bit harder to make sure that that crop of yours just looks amazing? <sighs> Okie dokie. Well, I guess I will see you next time.